Guilds of Ravnica is officially spoiled, and I would like to know, what are the most expensive cards in this set? When I'm opening a box, what cards am I hoping to pull? If we're just looking at it from a value standpoint, typically I don't do this, but I'm going to have some fun and uh, hopefully uh, make some sense of all these cards and where the value is at in them. So first up, we got Mausoleum Secrets. This one, I'm a little surprised uh, that it's only 425. I thought it would have a more uh, stronger presence in the beginning. This is one card because it's a tutor ability I can see going up in value. I'm not sure if it's going to take until after this current standard or if it's going to be during the standard, but it's a tutor card and it's not a bad one. So 425, I think, was kind of surprising that it's starting at such a low point. Uh, I'd expect this one to go up. Knight of Autumn. So at 425 right now, this will see a lot of play across many formats. Uh, I'd say almost just about every format this thing will see playing. Knight of I mean, just having those the, the versatility of the cards really what does it. Uh, the, there's options on this thing, and people like options. Um, you know, to take care of certain threats or just whatever you need to do to make things work in that moment. And Knight of Autumn brings that to the table. 425, I don't know, something tells me this card's actually going to go down. Call me crazy, but I, I think this one's going to go down a little bit. Chance for Glory. I'm currently sitting at 435. One of my more favorite cards of this set. I'm definitely going to build a deck, uh, and this will be inclusion. It's a three drop, and the creatures you control get indestructible, and you take X turn for this one. I mean, that's ridiculous. And of course, it's crazy. I mean, you're, you're all or nothing in this card. Uh, you lose the game. Uh, at the beginning of the next turn's end step. But there are cards that are very cheap. They're artifacts, and they allow you just to end your turn. Um, I wonder if that would skip the end step. I'm not sure how that would play in. But uh, there are ways around uh, this. Uh, you lose the game. Uh, I'm just saying, it's, it's, it's a card that has potential. I don't know... If it's going to go up in value right now, though. This one I'm kind of on the edge about. Underrealm Leak. Good old zombie elf shaman. If you would draw a card instead to look at the top three cards of your library. Then put one into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. Pay for life. Uh, call me crazy. I see this one going down in price, believe it or not. Um, I see this one dropping a little bit. March of the Multitudes. Now... Oh, man, these ones can be tough. The good old Convoke, man. Create X-1-1 white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. I think that lifelink ability is really what's going to keep this card at its price point, being a 595. A uh, little bit of fluctuation, but I would say not much with uh, multitudes here. Temple Garden. The cheapest Shockland you can get. It's currently sitting at $6.85. Um, these are, uh, they're always sought after. I mean, you hope to pull them. They usually retain their value. They do retain their value more so than any other cards are uh, dual lands. So something uh, we, we all keep in mind, I'm sure. But yeah, definitely if you're a newer player, don't just trade away your dual land. <laughs> a lot of us did that when we were younger um, and had some really expensive cards like the Bayou and Tropical Island and... Uh, we traded up for some little big old bulky creature card. Don't be a Timmy, I suppose. But yeah, definitely a Temple Garden. It, we'll slowly see these creep up. Uh, expect that all the shock lands are slowly going to creep. Mnemonic Betrayal. This card's going to see some play uh, all around. It's it's just a, uh, exiling all cards from all opponents' graveyards. I mean, you're really... You're causing some... Uh, some chaos here with that and then being able to cast something i mean that's that's ridiculous also 685 uh, i can see this card probably staying around where it's at if anything it may go up i think it's going to go down a little bit before it goes up but then i mean if it plays well in the new standard which it should if it's like shutting standard you know some decks down uh then this thing it can expect it to go up overgrown tomb Again, with the shock lands, yeah. I mean, they just range in price basically based on uh, the card's usage. I mean, what colors are played more? That's kind of how it's determined. 
Lazav the Multifarious. I wasn't too crazy for this card. I did make a comparison to the Scarab God. Obviously, it's not a Scarab God, and I did say that in the earlier video. But, uh, I mean, I guess I was kind of surprised at its starting point, being at 745. I thought we might see this thing around like six, five bucks. Um, but it's a legendary two drop, and, and that's, that's a lot right there, just, to, you know, to be had. I expect this one to stay, I don't know, no, this one's another one that could jump like crazy. I mean, depending really how it's impacted, um, what impact it has. And Commander as well, I mean, maybe a little bit of modern play. This thing's, uh, this one's one of the ones I'd really want to keep an eye on. Watery Grave, again, uh, of course, Dimer would be up here, uh, the more expensive. Shocklands along with Is It and Steam Vents is up there in price. Sacred Foundry. They're all pretty much around the same price tag, though, about eight twenty-five a pop currently. And that fluctuates. It's like a quarter every day. Nullhide Ferox. This one is anyone's guess, really. I, I think the price point's where it's at because not many people know exactly how it's going to impact uh, formats and whatnot. If it's going to impact any formats, I mean, really, uh, this card's kind of goofy. The Hexproof, you can't cast non-creature spells. And then reduce no hide Ferox. So this is all abilities until end of turn. Any player may activate this ability. If a spell or ability an opponent controls causes you to discard no hide Ferox, put it on the battlefield instead of putting it in, 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 in your graveyard. It's just a goofy card, to be honest. Uh, I can't wait to see someone put this sucker to really good use, and then then I'll be uh, I'll be eating my words. But I just don't I don't see this thing taking off. If anything, I see it dropping in value. I see this hugger really dropping in value. Um, but then again, for ramping purposes, it's a 6-6 six, six for 4. I mean, hello, Galta. He is in the standard right now, so maybe it'll stay around that, but expect it to teeter off. Mission Briefing 2-drop. Surveil 2, then choose an instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. You may cast this card or that card this turn. If that card would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile instead. Dangerous card, man. This thing, uh, when it drops, very dangerous card. I can see this maintaining its price point for some time. Maybe slightly dropping. I'd say about like seven bucks, uh, seven nine. But then again, I mean, a lot of these cards, most of them are going to drop in value just because the hype is real right now. Please understand that. The hype is very, very real, especially with a card like this. Um, this thing's not going to maintain a $10 price point. If it does, foot and mouth. But I would expect this thing to be more like around five bucks in due time. But you never really know. Um, just everyone gets very excited, and uh, why not? I'm one of those, very guilty, of being excited during spoiler season. But this one's nine forty-five. I don't expect it to stay at that price point, though. Doom Whisperer, man, I love this card. I really, really do. It's really neat. It's really, really awesome. Uh, Ten ninety-five right now. I'd say that's about probably where it should be. Uh, this is a five drop with flying and trample and the surveil ability. I mean, that's that's big, guys, uh, especially in this standard right now. It, it's big. I, I would say this thing's going to stay around there. Um, but, of course, I, all the cards I do expect to drop 10% or something uh, once... Uh, once the standard uh, hits, you know, and things are in full effect. Because everyone's opening boxes and stuff, you know. So it's like Christmas morning. Like, it was all excitement. And then you opened up all the gifts, and it's like, oh, well, I guess I'll play with this one. It's the funnest one. And that's kind of how it works with Magic cards. Uh, Rail is it Viceroy. Only two Planeswalkers in this set. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. He, uh, play, I, I think he might drop off. But then again, is it's looking really good? I mean, is it is and the other two, the black and green, they're just looking ridiculous. So they could make this could maintain their fair price. I think eleven sixty five is fair right now. Divine Visitation, awesome card, but I do expect this one to go down. Um, it, it is a really good card though, for sure, and it's going to see some play. Uh, I think we're going to see a lot more cards that are sideboards, or a lot of sideboards will include destroying enchantments and whatnot, and uh, artifacts because there's just some ridiculous enchantments in this set. Um, expect this one to drop a little bit. Vraska Golgari Queen. Sweetness, baby. 1550. Yep, yeah, I'd say that's fair asking price right now. 
Um, the ability to destroy target and land permanent with converted mana cost three or less is pretty amazing. And uh, sacrifice another permanent. Gain one life and draw a card. There's just a lot of things you can do right there. And it's minus nine is ridiculous. Uh, this could go up in value if, uh, you know, it's it's just starting to win and win and win. I, I hope to see it in competitive a lot. Uh, I, I hope. That's the hope I have. We'll see. Impervious Great Worm. Big old 10 drop. I'd say this is going to drop in price. I could be wrong, though, but, I mean, it's an indestructible 16-16. That's really all it is, and it's just limited because it's in the buy a box promotion. That's it. I'd say this thing is going to drop to, like, 8 bucks. I don't think it's going to be crazy. But uh, you, you, you give this thing the right abilities, you know, you put trample on this thing, you instantly have a force to be reckoned with. And the Convoke, I mean, a 16-16 Convoke into... Ah, it's tough to say with this one, guys. It was kind of like a Nexus of Perfect, um, Nexus of <laughs> Nexus of Perfect, uh, a Fate, but... Oh, man, I'm, on the, I'm really on the fence. I got to hear your guys' thoughts on these. Like, really, I, I can't just be the, the mastermind of all this. Uh, I, I want to hear some uh, conversations in the comments. Really, where do you guys think these cards are going? Because it's honestly hard to say with a lot of them. But, I mean, you just give this thing trample, and you got a 16-16 indestructible with trample. That's insane, you know? So, we'll see. Assassin's Trophy. This thing I do see dropping in price. You're not going to maintain a $25 price. There's no way, no how, you're going to sit at $25.50. I'm sorry. Uh, being the most expensive card as a rare, that's pretty neat, I must say. But I just don't see it staying that high. I mean, the hype is real. It's a great card. It's not like it says Exile, though. All right? I'm not downplaying the card. I think the card's amazing. I really do. It's going to see a lot of playing, a lot of formats. But it doesn't say Exile, Target Permanent. All right, that's a big deal. So keep that in mind. All right, guys, I do appreciate uh, you tuning in. As always, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. It means a lot. If you're not subscribed already, please, by all means, subscribe. We've got a lot of exciting stuff coming up here in the next few uh, few weeks. So make sure you stay tuned. And as always, PLA.